Hey everyone, you're watching the Inside Out BIM and today we're continuing our series on vectors. Today we're going to take a look at a practical solution for measuring distance between two points along a given vector. If you haven't watched the first two parts, make sure to do that. It's crucial for you to fully comprehend the topic of vectors. Before getting started, if you find the content useful, Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. So here I have some kind of like a preset. So I've just modeled a point. So I defined two coordinates for this, five for the X, two for the Y. So as you can see, let's just kind of have, that is my first point. That is actually like in my, or, that is like my origin. And that is like my second point. So that is this one. So if I select it, as you can see, I have this point. And uh, I just created a vector from this point to here. I just made it on origin, so it's going to be easier for us. And we already know how to visualize vectors. If you don't know, make sure to watch previous, uh, previous videos about vectors. So here we simply connect vector here. We call node vector.length. And we connect this one to here, this one to here, and there we go. We have a vector. Actually, that is the representation of the vector by line. So it's kind of easier for us to make sure what we have. And what is our goal? So we have two of these points. So we have this point and we have this point. And what I want to do is that I want to measure the distance between them but not like that, but the distance from here to here. Because of course, in Dynamo, we have this distance too, that is awesome, right? So you can easily go and connect this point to this point, and you will get the distance 5.38. So that will be the distance from here to here. But sometimes we wanna measure along some vector. And that can be so helpful on your way of developing a lot of things for Revit and especially working with a lot of geometry, you'll definitely find the use for this. So our goal is to grab and like dimension this from here to here, like along this vector. So this vector, for I just grabbed this for the basis vector. So our X, as you can see, it has an end point with coordinates X, one so that is here z y is zero z is zero and length is one if length equals to one that means that that vector is normalized so and i did actually the same thing that i did here just by using code block if that is intimidating for you i'm going to delete it actually and play and copy this part instead but just for you to be able to do something like a little bit cooler and a little bit easier to visualize because it's taking, this one is taking up a lot of space. So we simply here go with the direction and here go with this one. So that is like the same. So again, let's kind of remind ourselves what is a dot product? So here I have again, a visual representation, an amazing app. Oops. So as you can see here, we have like two vectors and let's imagine that this vector is going right here. This, like here we have a projection on this vector. So we kind of project from one vector to the other, like a 90 degree connection here. And this line represents the length, right? So if I go there, if we were to project from this vector to this, it's going to be like a 90 degree. And this will give us this length. But what can be quite tricky to understand that whether your vector normalized or not actually matters. So imagine that you have two of these vectors and that represents this length. If you are following the same direction, but making that longer, as you can see this direction, this length increases. So whether or not your dot product is norm vectors are normalized or not, it actually very, it's actually very important to understand the difference. So we looked at kind of finding out the relationship between vectors. And in this case, use normalized vectors all the time. 
like have a vector get it from line or whatever like you get it from and make sure it's normalized make sure that its length equals to one but when you want to measure the distance between two points along a given vector that is vitally important that one of your vectors is not is not normalized and here i'm going to show you why so here imagine that we don't even have two of these vectors for the time being let's just concentrate on two of these points so maybe you have a wall or you have a pipe or you have a like a conduit it doesn't matter just some curve based element and you get a curve of this right so you selected your element and you get a location curve of this so you got the curve and you got two points and you're like you know what I don't want to measure along two points because even like here, if I go to Revit and place just two components, two uh, like desks, right? Uh, I think, okay, wait a minute. Gosh, what the hell, I think. Oh, nice. So we usually measure like this, right? So we really rarely, and I actually right now, it's not that easy to find this point. But we usually measure like this. We don't measure like from here to here. So that can be quite useful, right? And we use this in Revit a lot. So what we can do here is that, for example, we've got two of these points and we can get the vector of two of these points. So we've got the vector. And now the really important part is that we don't kind of normalize it. As you can see, if you scroll to the right, we see the length of this. Right, it's not normalized. If I go vector dot normalized, it will normalize this vector. Right, so now it will normalize it. Now its length will be one. And if I wanted to actually, let's just connect this here, like this, length and direction, this will be normalized, as you can see. So, but now I don't want to work with this like that. I'm going to show you why. So again, let's remind ourselves what we do. We have one vector, we have the other one. We project like a 90 degree relationship. And this yellow part is that distance, is that double, is that value that we can get from the dot product. So I'm gonna call dot. And I'm gonna connect two vectors. This one that goes here and the one on the x so basically here you're determining the vector along what you want to get the distance on right so that is the vector along the side that you want to get the distance i just grabbed like the basis vector in x but it doesn't matter eventually you can for example you have two points and you can say i want to grab the distance along like this side or like this side we can even check out on this side as well it's not a big deal right so now you have five how can we check if that is correct? Let's create a distance and set the x of this value. And we and if that is going to be here, that means we kind of figured that out and everything is okay. So we can go point by coordinates and we can simply get this x here. And there we go. We kind of find out the distance from here to here. So we got two points and we measured the distance to here. Because what we do is that we have one vector, we have the other one, and we create a projection from here to here, and this side is going to be our dot product. But if you normalize it, so for example, vector dot normalized, normalized. If you were to normalize it, and let's right away, right away, <laughs> visualize it so you can actually see the difference. So actually, that is your normalized vector. And uh, now your point, so now I need to change this vector here. As you can see, now it, it equals 0 0.92, and that is placed right over here. And that is actually easy to understand because we pass a projection here to make a 90 degree, and here that is our distance, right? So that, that is the usage. That is when... Uh, whether you normalize or not plays a huge role. So make sure you don't normalize here. Just understand why, because 
you normalize it, you have two vectors, and you drop a projection, but you actually want to drop it from here, not from here. So that is the reason why we do this. So let's delete this normalized. Let's visualize again this one. So I'm going to connect it, and now we have the correct one. Let's say we want to go with the y-axis. So we simply change y-axis. So here I'm going to delete it. I'm going to change here so we can visualize it. And also I'm going to pa paste it here. Yeah, now it's kind of like uh, a little bit incorrect because uh, we're getting the value uh, like this. We need to pass this to the Y, you know, because we're measuring along the Y and to visualize it here. And there we go. So we have it here. So distance from distance between two of these points along this vector equals to two. So as you can see how powerful it is. So again, to recap, when you have two points to measure distance along two of these points, you need to create a vector between two of these points. So we've got like the first point, we've got the second point. So one point, the first one, the second one, we create vector by two of these points. We make sure that we don't normalize it, right? But the vector that we're measuring along should be normalized. So for example, if you're measuring along this distance, make sure it's normalized. If you're measuring this distance, make sure it's normalized because we don't care about this one. This one is only pointing to along what vector we're measuring. But this one is actually determining uh, from where from where we're going to kind of drop this projection. So if we normalize it, it's going to drop its projection from here. But if you don't normalize, if you didn't normalize, it would drop projection from here. So that is vitally important for you to understand. And now you can actually try a lot of cool stuff. For example, if you have two elements, so two curved elements. So what is a usage for this? Is imagine that that is your like two pipes and you can actually get the end points of these two pipes. You can measure the distance along them. In this side, you can grab the perpendicular one and measure this in this side. You can figure out like what angle you would like to join them at and just now a simple trigonometry, right? So here, if you draw a trigonometry, like some triangle, have some angles and you can actually play around with this, right? So knowing some distances, I'm going to show you this actually example. I think I'm going to do this in Revit API using Revit API and C Sharp, but I'm definitely going to... Uh, I'm going to show some uh, simple tricks in Dynamo as well. Just to it's just for you to have an idea that how powerful that can be. So make sure you play around with this. Now you easily can measure distance distance uh, between two points. So I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you find the content useful, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. And thank you for watching and have a nice day.